hello hello my youtube family welcome back you guys to my channel and welcome to all that are new to my channel so i am just practicing with my copic markers you guys that i got a few months back i got a whole new set i was just like i'm ready to get back to it it's been like i don't know how long years since i've actually colored with copic markers and you know did a full traditional piece um and all of the stuff that i just showed you i'm gonna put those in the link below if you're interested in purchasing any of those um but yeah i love my little copic bag <laughs> and then i just sharpened my little blue sketch pencils which i love to use one of them the one that i'm using now is a derwent pencil that i just wore the heck out of it that's why i have a pencil extender on it um and uh i don't even think derwent sells that pencil anymore but prismacolor cola race pencil is just as great um so yeah i was just sharpening those getting those ready and i'm just warming up right here so that's just me drawing like shapes and just practicing um what i'm going to draw which i highly recommend that you do warming up you guys is so important i definitely feel like i could have warmed up longer um but yeah it just really helps you get back in the groove of things because i'm telling you i remember the days where i didn't warm up and i started drawing and i was just like oh my gosh am i losing my skill but no you're not losing your skill you just gotta warm up because you're a little bit rusty you're just getting back to it so you just need a little bit time for your you know brain to warm back up and your you know hands to get back used to the paper and everything and you'll be fine so yeah make sure you warm up before you draw it'll make you feel a lot more confident with your lines and um just with your overall drawing and picture so um yeah you guys i'm so excited to get back to traditional artwork like this is going to be super exciting um Especially because I was like, okay, I definitely got to use these Copic markers because they're just sitting here. Um, I think it's like we all have that low-key little, you know, fear that we're going to mess up our piece because, you know, markers. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I love the sketch. I don't want to color it because what if I mess it up? But, you know, we just have to, you know, trust. You know, for me, I trust in God. And I'm just like, okay, God, I know you want me to create. I know you want me to get creative and not be afraid and just to do it. And, you know, because you never know until you try, right? You have to experiment and this is definitely like just a whole little experiment so for my experiment with my copic markers i decided that i was going to do something different with this and i was going to actually color with um the copic markers first before the line art just to see how it works kind of like you know when people paint with acrylics and they'll you know paint their base colors and everything before they do the line art so i wanted to try this and you know see if it worked for me so that's what i was doing um, but right now I was, you know, looking up some flowers and stuff to add some pizzazz to the picture um, because I didn't really have much of an idea of what I wanted to do. But I knew I saw flowers. I saw flowers around the girl that I was drawing. drawing and I was like, OK, we're going to do some flowers, especially because springtime is like what? almost here or it is here no springtime is here <laughs> what am i saying so it's like the perfect time to draw flowers and um yeah so i'm just working on the sketch here just getting it all nice and ready for the markers and everything also i noticed that um <laughs> it's a little cut off on the bottom because i have one of those drawing desks so it's at an angle so the book likes to slide down so <laughs> yeah just letting you know that and another reason I know it's spring is because, my goodness, I am just sneezing and just a little stuffy right now. So excuse me for my little stuffy voice. You know how that pollen do. My goodness. <laughs> but yeah, since the picture too, or my character, she wasn't like on the, like in the center of the page like I wanted her to be. At the end, you'll see what I did to fill up that top space. Um, but yeah, so right here I have my Copic Colors swatch sheet which i highly recommend for when you're coloring with any kind of markers just because when you're coloring with markers they're not usually the same color as what you'll see on the marker tube so it's crucial because it'll just help you to be like okay this color goes with this color and this is how it'll look um when it goes on this same kind of paper so yeah that's what i did and that helps a lot like a lot a lot so when I was coloring the skin, like I started off with the light colors and then I gradually moved up to the darker colors and I left some white spaces. Um, so, you know, we can have some highlights. So you don't want to color in every area. You want to leave some white spaces open for some highlights. And then later, like when it dries, like I, I went over with a light color and you can have like that, like it looks like there's like a light little highlight there, but you'll see that later on. So you won't leave it like all the way white, but you can if you want to. 
So I wanted to show you guys this practice that I did with coloring skin. And this was actually the first time I touched the Copic markers, um, which I think it was like the end of last year or the beginning of this year, something like that. But I wrote down a sheet of just all of the colors that worked for the skin so that I can have that on the side to use as a guide for me. So I used that guide so, you know, um, it could help me out so I don't make any mistakes or anything. So I highly recommend that as a little tip for you to make sure before you you are working on a piece that you want to like you know actually come out good <laughs> that you practice on something else first and that's something that you really have to learn too especially when you're I feel like you know when you're working on digital like digital art for so long like you become spoiled so you have to like when you get back to traditional art you have to realize that it requires patience and you have to actually test out the colors first you have to make a little swatch sheet you have to make like a thumbnail guide to make sure colors work out and stuff for you before you actually put it on the paper because you know there's no undo button and you know it's definitely something that requires a lot more patience. So take your time with it. Think it through before you put a color down. Because I remember when I used to color with COVID markers, I used to just throw colors down and I did not like have a plan. So it's important for you to have a plan when it comes to coloring with markers um, because, you know, you can't use layers, you can't delete, you can't you know, color over it with something. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna be like how digital would be. So yeah, it's important to be patient and to really take your time when it comes to coloring with markers and, you know, traditional mediums. So yeah, that was something I had to remind myself of. And for the color scheme for this, because I didn't really like make a plan plan, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it safe. I'm gonna go the safe route and use the same like hue of colors. So blues and like bluish greens, cause I know that they go well together. So I just imagined it in my head because I was like, okay, I'm not gonna be putting in a whole bunch of different other colors. So I'm just going to do something easy for now um, since I'm just practicing. And yeah, so that's what I decided to do. Just keep it simple. And yeah, I came up with this, you know, blue color scheme. And then all this little hand movement going on is just me talking about <laughs> how I actually had a different plan for this image. And that was for my Patreon because I post the real time videos there. And yeah, I was just explaining some stuff. But yeah, if you guys are interested in checking out my real time videos and stuff and monthly tutorials, go ahead and check out my Patreon link in description below. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys more about that later. But I decided to make her hair black because I was like, okay, black blue and white you know that's a beautiful color scheme so and i just thought that black was just best fitting for this picture and i actually looked up a little hair coloring tutorial um i actually put the link description below it's on youtube if you guys are interested in checking it out because i was like i know it's not going to be like a solid black you know there's got to be like some pops of color in there so you know i put some blues in there since you know blue is like the scheme like you know part of the color scheme and that really kind of make made it pop you know instead of just using black and gray you know that would make it really dull but using those other colors just really helped to bring it to life more and then right here, I'm bringing out my little color pencil case, which I absolutely love. That's gonna be in the description below too if you guys are interested in getting a color pencil case. Um, that's where I put all of my Arteza pencils in and I just had those out just in case I wanted to add anything. And now I'm using my Copic multi-liner pen to do the line art for my character. I was like, I am so ready to do this line art because I was so tired of it just like, you know, not seeing it come together. Uh, you know, like when you're, you know, doing your makeup or you're watching a makeup tutorial and like the look comes together when you put that eyeliner on and the lashes, that's kind of how it is when it's just like you're waiting to do the line art. So <laughs> especially because this is a new technique for me. Normally I'll do the line art first and then I'll color. But, you know, it's definitely something that I'm learning and I think what I learned from doing it this way is that I noticed that the features that I drew at first are definitely not in the same place that they were when I drew them. So I think that I would definitely do the line art first next time, um, just so that I can know that my original sketch will look the same, you know, after it's done. So yeah, that's what I learned. Um, but it still came out cute and everything though. I still really liked it. 
I also used some of my sepia multi-liner pens to just add some, you know, line art to areas where I felt needed to be more natural, like under her chin, even though I added some black there, <laughs> but really like on her nose, like I wouldn't like make that black. I would like keep that like that brown sepia color or the top of her lip. I would make that the brown sepia color so it could be more natural. So yeah, I recommend, you know, using like different line art colors. So for areas where you feel like should be more natural, you can use that. So yeah. And oh my gosh, when I started doing the line art for the flowers, I was like, oh my gosh, it's coming out so cute. I just had that idea in my brain to just, you know, have like these, you know, black, blue, and white flowers and I think it really turned out super cute i mean even though it's not like a black flower but the black line art though and then i of course left some white um on the flowers just so you know you can have like that highlight so it's not just one solid color and then it's also nice to go back in with the shadow colors that you use for the skin to add some more depth once the skin has dried and it just turns out really good and it just makes it pop more. So I really like how that turned out. And then I decided to fill some of the space around her head with butterflies because you know your girl loves butterflies y'all and it's perfect for the springtime with the flowers and the butterfly combination. You can't go wrong. So I love how that came out and I just really love the blue colored scheme and it just showed me that I don't have to have like all the colors of the rainbow to make such an amazing piece. Like it could just be a nice simple blue scheme of color. So really, really like that. And then to fill in the gap at the top of the paper, I decided to add in this little blue kind of moon thing going on here, or just like this like blue refreshing setting. Um, and I left some white gaps in there to just give that refreshing look and I put a little moon inside. So it's kind of like a little scene behind her, which I really like. And it's just super simple, a cute little design to just add some more pizzazz to the picture. And I really, really love how it came out. Super cute and refreshing. And just it's beautiful. And now I'm just going back in and adding some final details. I took my color pencil, my pink color pencil to add some more life to her lips and that just really added the icing on top for me. And then I got my jelly roll pins and I'm using those for highlight, y'all. I love these jelly roll pins. I used to use them all the time and I needed them too last minute. So Amazon came in clutch. Y'all know with that same day shipping or next day shipping. So I'll have that down in the links below if you guys wanna get your um, white highlighter pins from there so super awesome so I literally I think I went a little overboard with the highlighter pin you guys I was having so much fun because I was like oh my gosh it's been so long since I used this and I just love how it makes the picture pop so I might have added one too many highlight but hey never too much highlighter right I mean shoot <laughs> so yeah i really enjoyed myself working on this picture i really hope that you all enjoyed watching this video and i hope that it was able to give you guys some tips once again make sure to check out my patreon i post monthly tutorials there and i also post real-time videos behind the scenes you can get my um what is it the face stamps and body stamps for procreate and all other art programs and my brushes and so much more coloring pages so go ahead and check that out, you guys. And yeah. All right, you guys. So this is the final piece. I really, really love how it came out. The colors are super beautiful. Um, like I said, I definitely next time will start off with the line art first, just so I can have more control with how the drawing will turn out. Um, but yeah, it was fun trying a new technique. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, you guys, I can't wait to share with you all more videos like this. I really hope that you learned something from this video as well. And also, if you guys are interested in seeing monthly tutorials from me and getting some extra rewards, seeing behind the scenes and more, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash raw sushi. The links will be in the description below. So yeah, you guys, love you all so much and I'll see you all on my next video. Peace, love, and God bless my loves. Bye!